Let's check out how to work with Web HTML Editor. So in your Visual Studio Toolbox, locate the Infragistics ASP.NET 11.1 or whatever it is that you have as far as volumes of NetAdvantage. Locate the Web HTML Editor and drag and drop it onto your web form. So first thing that you might notice is that these images haven't been rendered. There's a bunch of toolbar images that aren't showing up. And you'll experience this with the newer versions of Visual Studio and you know if you don't have IIS installed um, so because this is a website um, so it's not you know it's not like a web application or it's not using IIS it's just using Visual Studio you know, new website so one of the things you need to do is locate the NetAdvantage installation which on my computer is program files x86 infragistics NetAdvantage whatever volume you have ASP.NET images so I'm just gonna grab the images and these images represent the other types of controls that Infragistics has not the the newer ASP.NET Ajax based controls such as web data grid and those guys these are the other ones like web HTML editor web schedule and all those other controls so I just basically right clicked copied and pasted it into the IG res folder underneath images and I and I specifically kept it separate than, from the other themes and if you're wondering where IG res came from, if you drag and drop any of the ASP.NET AJAX controls for the very first time into your app, it will prompt you to copy over the default theme into a folder called IG res. And that's what happened. So to keep things clean, I just dumped the other images here where it says images. And then what you, what you need to do is click on the web HTML editor, uh, locate the images directory property, and then set it to the correct path which is IG res images and I'll just take that guy off and then once I do that everything works all the images are resolved and by the way IG common is the directory that's installed into IIS whenever you install Infragistics products Infragistics ASP.NET stuff on a machine that does have IIS but when you go and deploy it there's variations on how you could do that but for now we're just going to concentrate on how to work with the web HTML editor. Another thing that I had to do was add a, a directory into my web application called uploads. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be the way I did it here. You could have another folder somewhere else in another different network or somewhere that just has permissions. So when I added it here I went through Windows Explorer located that folder which is actually part of the web application which is here and if we right click and go to the properties notice what I did was go to the sharing tab and I shared it and if I click on this just to show you I added everyone and gave everyone read and write permissions and I also went to the advanced sharing and I gave permissions to everyone of full control I did that now again you may have other roles and other types of permissions but the biggest thing is that and by the way I, I uploaded stuff here before so let me delete these guys so you need to have permissions so that the web HTML editor can expose its image, flash object, and Windows Media file type uploads to your web server or whatever other server it is that you decide to share on. And you need to do that so that way you can allow your end users to take advantage of adding images and media files to the content. So the main purpose of the web HTML editor is to allow you to create some kind of content editing system or application or have that functionality in your app not to just edit content but maybe to send emails or messages or you can do whatever you want with this in your apps it's, you could be very creative with it with all the built-in functionality of this very rich HTML based editor so if I were to just run the application right now just to take a look at what we have um, you know, I could start typing stuff in Um, you know, I could do some formatting. I could like highlight stuff here, just changing colors. You know, it may not look pretty during this example, but just to give you an idea, you could change the size of the font, make it a little bigger. You could, um, you know, change the style of the font of you know, whatever I highlight. There's also built-in formatting. Like I could do an H, H1. So I could set this here as heading to if I wanted to and then I could jump to various styles like you know blue underline red bold all these guys here and 
I could insert something like, say if I go here, these are like, you could think of these as code snippets or content snippets. I could just insert that in there. So, and this is still formatted as H1, but it's just various things of what you can do. And say if I wanted to insert an object, if I click on image, see when you get this error message, so this is what I wanted to show you. So I did not set the property on the control, and I wanted to show you guys that this is what happens when you don't set the property or you don't have permissions to upload to a directory. So let's go and take care of that right now. So we stop the application, we click on the editor, and we locate the upload files directory. And what you want to do is just set it to the directory that you have here. Uploads. And let's run it again. And this time, when I click on image, I will get the dialog correctly. So that's the control is good that it does that. It, it kind of gives you a message, a little JavaScript pop-up saying, hey, you can't upload anything. And the way it works is you click on browse. And what it'll do is it will you know, pop up a dialog to where you may have some pictures. And let's say if you upload one picture, then it's done. And you could upload another one and another one so you get the point you could upload as many as you like you could have a really filled list here so I, I'm just gonna choose one of these pictures and you could set properties on them like width and height you know title border so if I do a border on here and then click OK and it just inserts it into my text just like that so that's how it works now how do we save this stuff well let's take a look at how we do that Notice there's a bunch of buttons here that like undo and redo. If I undo this, you know, redo that or whatever with the text and everything. Um, one of the buttons that you might notice here is called save. So the way you want to work with the toolbar in this capacity is let's click on this, control, go to the events, and we're going to add an event handler for the toolbar click events. So I double click that. And this is a pretty interesting way of doing it. So this is how it works. You want to test the e.item.act property. You could use like a, you should normally use like if you want to handle a bunch of other acts, you should definitely do a case statement. But I'm just going to only test for save. But if I show you the action type enumeration, look at how many, look at how many items there are here. So anytime one of these guys are clicked, you have an enumeration member that represents that. So I'm going to just care about save for now. And another thing that I want to show you is the various types of ways you can save the text or the content from the editor. So let's do that right now. Let's just do this. And what I'll do is I'll put a breakpoint here so that we can explore the various types of ways of saving the text. OK, so let's run it. Let's say if I set some text here, and I want to set a size on this, and then I wanted to set a color on that, and let's see what else can we do. I'm going to just totally style this text. All right, so now I press the Save button. The event handler fires, and I basically get the text property. So let's just play around with this a little bit. I'm going to throw it into the Quick Watch. It's one of the ways I like to learn about stuff is to throw it into the quick watch or just or just like you know do a quick watch here, not the watch. So when you get the text property, you get basically the standard HTML markup that represents the text as you see here. See the tags? Now if I were to go to the plain text or text plain rather notice how it strips out all the tags so now you've learned you have text and text plane but the other one that you may want to look at is this guy right here text xhtml so when you look at this one here this is xhtml formatted markup so these are the various ways that you can access the properties of whatever your end users type and then you could save it to wherever you want let's say you have some logic classes or, or whatever business object classes that 
that um you know that that are designed to save stuff or maybe you have like a entities that represent a content item or content info and one of the properties is content and maybe you have an ID or whatever save it in your database however you want to access that and save it but the the big point of this to learn is which properties you want to choose to save but obviously you want to save the HTML markup of some kind so that way you're not destroying or maybe you want to save both just the plain text for searchability let's say if you have two fields in your backend database where one of them is plain text the other one is the marked up text where you want to render the website or something because you could take all this content that is actually HTML or XHTML compliant and render it dynamically on your website just like any old content editing system or forum posts or email stuff does out there so this is essentially the web HTML editor and I hope you could find some great uses for this in your application alright take care enjoy Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.